So Lyrical Lemonade just dropped this new music video for Dot the Genius featuring Kid Cudi, Denzel Curry, J.I.D. Talk About Me music video. Super cool stuff. So today I'm going to recreate the effects, show you how to create some really cool things using a bunch of different softwares, beginner, medium, and advanced. Something for everyone in here. Let's get right into it. Slap a like on the video. If you do enjoy, comment down below what you want to see next. And as always, if you're a visual artist, subscribe to stay up to date to all the tutorials we're dropping weekly. All right. By the way, if you're looking for any plugins, presets, extensions to save you time and create cool effects, my digital asset store is at the top of the description. So number one, we need some Chrome animated text. Number two, we're going to do some easy camera lens stuff. Number three, we're going to create this crazy silhouette environment using After Effects. And then number four, we have this really cool animated overgrowth set. So starting off on recruit difficulty in After Effects. First off, create a new composition here. I'm going to use my text tool just to write in whatever text I want. Super standard. You can use the text tab on your right to change to any custom font, change around the sizing, whatever. Next, I'm going to right click in that gray space and create a new solid. I'm going to go to my effects and presets and I'm going to search for a fractal noise effect. In that fractal noise, you can change the noise type around. This is going to determine your chrome. I like going with a soft linear noise type. I like bumping up the contrast, lowering down the brightness. Of course, you can play with these settings to your liking and that's good for now. Next up, we're going to go to our effects and presets and slap on a CC blobalize. So go ahead and drop that in, open up the blobbiness tab, go to your blob layer and just select whatever text layer you set up originally for your source. So now you should see this Chrome 3D look on your text. And if you guys want, you can go through and play around with any of these settings to change it up. Uh, you can change the fractal noise, the actual Chrome by playing with the fractal noise settings. And if you want to change the way that it's sort of blobbing or the way it's 3D extruding, whatever, you can go through the CC blobalize settings and change any of those away. So to animate this, let's have our text fly towards our camera. I'm going to select both of those layers and pre-compose them and just name this Chrome text. Then I'm going to go to my effects and presets and I'm going to search for a CC lens effect. This will give us a bit of distortion similar to what you saw in that original music video. In your effect controls, you guys can keyframe that size and the convergence to try and create a little animation of your text bending and warping. Next, we're going to right click and go to new and we're going to create a new camera. So in this camera, what we need to do first is make sure that Chrome text layer is a 3D layer. So click toggle switches and modes, make sure that 3D layer switch is enabled. Now in our camera layer, we can expand that. We can open up the position values and we can start keyframing them at our beginning position. We can drag a bit in the timeline and then we can click C to toggle through our camera controls, to zoom in, pan, whatever. We're basically just making a simple zoom so that the text flies towards us. So play around with your keyframes. You should have distorted Chrome text flying at your scene. Now, what if you want to take it one step further? Well, you guys can double click into that Chrome text composition, select your original text layer, go up to the animation tab, go down to add text selector and select range. Now you can expand the details for that layer. Scroll down until you find that little animator one that's now there and click that little add arrow on the right. You want to go to property and you want to go down to all transform properties. It should add in some transform values in a range selector. So now what you can do is use that range selector. You'll see the little start and end points. You can either drag the values or just drag the part in the composition so that those two little hash marks are in between whatever letter you want to individually animate. Once you have your letter selected between those hash marks, you can go to those new transform values that we added into our range selector and you can just start setting keyframes at our starting position. So we can start with our letter T just off the screen to the left set our keyframes, scroll a bit on the timeline, and then reset all of our transform values so that it flies into the scene from the left. To make that animation look a bit better, you can toggle on that motion blur switch. That way, whenever you play at full speed, it'll have a bit more realistic motion. And you can just rinse and repeat those steps to animate all of the individual letters if you really like. So that's our Chrome text. Now let me show you our second little After Effects part of this tutorial before we move into Premiere. A lot of easier stuff, a lot of more cinematic looks and less VFX heavy. Let me show you how to create an awesome music video composition just using After Effects. So starting off, you need to pick what footage you'd like. So in the original music video, they shot a bunch of green screen footage and they were able to composite it in and create their own scene. You could do that if you want, if you have some green screen footage. I'm going to go to pexels.com where you can download a bunch of royalty free shots and I'm going to download two examples. First, I'm going to download some green screen shots. 
Second, I'm just gonna download a regular clip. I'm gonna show you later how to mask the clip out to remove the background and still do the same thing that we're doing without needing green screen. So once you've selected your shots, first let me show you the green screen stuff. So I'm gonna drag that green screen clip into a new composition in After Effects. And what I'm gonna do is go to my effects and presets and search for the key light effect. An easy little trick here, if you click on those three little colored circles and change the color mode from RGB to alpha, it's going to go black and white. And then in your effect controls, you can open up the screen matte section and just play with the clip white and clip black until it looks as silhouette as possible. Once you've done that, you can click those three circles again, change from alpha mode to RGB mode, and you should have a much cleaner key. Of course, there's things like advanced bill suppression, there's key cleaner effects in After Effects to fix up green screen stuff. If you want to learn more about that, I'm going to leave a previous tutorial I made all about green screen compositing. So check that out if you're doing the green screen method. If you still want to create this cool composition without a green screen shot, here's how to do that. So I'm going to drag in a second clip, just this guy sitting here that I thought looked pretty cool. And what I'm going to do is rotoscope this footage so that I can just have this guy without all the background. So really easy to do that. Drag it into your composition, double click on your footage until you're in a layer, and then you wanna grab your roto brush tool. Roto brushing is extremely easy now that they updated After Effects. So all you need to do is left click and try and draw in, pretend you're painting over where the subject is. It's gonna give you some purple lines here. To fix up those purple lines and get them around our subject, you can hold the Alt key and you'll see your roto brush turn red, and then you can just draw away those lines. And again, try and hone the purple outline around your subject. Once you've done that for the first frame, you can click page down and do that for the next frame. If there's any errors going on, keep clicking page down and fixing any errors. With the new rotoscoping algorithm After Effects has, uh, I only had to do two frames before I was able to just click along and everything was perfect. So very minimal work. Once you're done here, you can use that little selection bar, then you can click that freeze button. So click back into the composition. You should see we now just have this guy sitting here without all the TVs in the back. So you can use that quick little tip and that tool if you want to, again, build a custom composition like we're about to do without needing green screen. So to create our composition, what I'm gonna do, make sure you're not selecting any layers. So if you are, just click off in the gray space, go ahead and grab your pen tool. And I'm just gonna draw some of those swoops and spikes or whatever you wanna call them um, that look like they're from the music video. You can expand the options in that shape layer you just created. You can go to fill and you can choose any specific color. And you can just keep repeating those steps to add any kind of cool designs or backgrounds to your custom composition. You can also right click and create a new solid. I'll name this one background and I'll just make it white. Make sure you drag that layer all the way below all the other ones so that it's behind everything else. And you should have these black sort of spikes on top of your white background. In the original music video, they shot all their green screen footage on a tripod. But if for any reason you rotoscoped out a shot where there's some camera motion, you're gonna need a 3D track. And this is again, optional. I'm just trying to give you every possible tool here for every possible situation. But either way, all you need to do is right click on your character, go to 3D camera track, let After Effects do its thing. Once you've done that, in your effect controls, you can click to create a new camera. You wanna to click toggle switches and modes and just enable the 3D layer switch for every layer in the composition. And you should now see all these different lines and background moving with the motion of our shot. You can scale things up to fix them if things are messing up a little bit, but that's really about it. Last thing I'm gonna mention um, in regard to this, if you guys want, you can kind of play with some depth of field in the background. So you can either do this with the After Effects camera by expanding the camera options, checking on that depth of field value and then playing with it until the, the background gets blurred. If you don't wanna bother with this and fake it, just by going to your effects and presets and searching up a little camera blur effect, you can just slap those on the individual layers and play around with the values. So you can blur the ones in the back more if you want. And I think it just gives your composition here a lot more depth. So that's how you can create a simple, um, creative, artistic composition for a music video straight within After Effects, super easy, just using shape layers. So we'll come back to After Effects a little bit later when we incorporate some 3D things in. Let's show you some easy little Adobe Premiere tricks. This is great for you directors out there who aren't creating like crazy VFX scenes, but maybe you just want like a cool look or cool little editing technique. So first off, let me show you how to create this distorted camera lens that you see from the original video. So I'm gonna drag some footage in here. And the first thing you wanna do is just select it, hold down Alt and click and drag up. That'll duplicate that clip in a video layer above it. So it's like the same as clicking Control D in After Effects. Click that duplication and over in your effect controls, you wanna go down to opacity and you wanna to click to create a little circular mask. 
Now what you can do is change the mask expansion or just grab the actual circle and place it however you'd like. And if you guys go to your color workspace here, you can just change around any of the settings. So the exposure and contrast, and it'll really show ultimately what we're doing. Essentially, we just isolated a ring on the outside of our scene. So now you can apply any blur effects, any chromatic effects, any sort of lens distortion stuff you want, and it's only going to be isolated on the edges of your scene. So if you need to click invert, if you're selecting the inside, not the outside, and then go down to your effects and presets, and we're going to drag in a Gaussian blur. Now this part, you don't really have to follow exactly what I'm saying. If you want, you could try a camera lens blur. You could try a directional blur. There's tons of different blurs in Premiere, so just experiment until you have a look you ultimately like. Play around with your mask feather so the lines aren't too crisp, they're a little bit softer. And if you really want, you can even combine the blurs just by alt click dragging up again to duplicate a layer. Remove whatever blur you had there, stack on a separate blur. So I had a Gaussian blur mixed with a directional blur. And it creates this cool kind of dreamy look like you're holding, sort of like you're holding glass in front of the lens like that. All right, now we're almost done before we get into the 3D stuff. If you want to create this cool editing style where you have one singular room and things are just kind of popping around in that quick fashion, the key to this is shooting your scene on a tripod. That way your set is completely locked into place. So you can start recording, you can have your subject walk into the scene, and then all you really need to do is just make some cuts and delete some of the parts in between. And you should have whatever's going on in the scene that's changing, jumping around in a pretty cool fashion. So you could get creative with this, they also used a lot of black and white scenes and fading from black and white into color scenes. I really love how this looks. For easy black and white, this is really simple. Go ahead and just make a cut wherever you want it to switch from black and white to normal or vice versa. Go to your effects and presets in Premiere and search for the black and white effect. Place that on your first clip and then right click on the cut that you made and select add default transition. That'll create this little cross dissolve. You can change the timing and essentially whenever you play the clip, it's going to go from your first color, so black and white, and fade into color. You guys can select the individual clips, go to your color workspace and just play around with any of those settings. And for an awesome bonus tip here, I'm going to leave this link below to this free 35 millimeter film grain overlay. I think this is way better than adding noise in Premiere After Effects. So you can download that overlay, place it in a video layer above, and you're going to get some awesome cinematic cinematic film looking shots. I think this looks great in black and white. All right, so now on to the final boss of this tutorial, the dreaded 3D parts. I think a lot of these look awesome. So we're going to start off with the most simple 3D you can do here. We're using free software, aka Blender, and we're not going to do anything crazy. We're just going to download something, um, set up a little camera, export the image, use it for After Effects. We need some 3D assets. So I'm going to search for free gaming computer model. You can look through CG Trader, Turbo Squid, whatever. You want to look for either an FBX, an OBJ, or a Blender project file. That one's probably the best because we're using Blender. So having the project file for your native 3D software is always a great start. I found this one here. I'll leave the link below. So I'm going to download that and then I'm going to open up Blender. We can delete the default cube file import, and we're going to import in that file type. In the top right, we want to go to our rendered shade mode so that we can actually see the textures that are applied. And then I'm going to select the PC case object and just click delete so we can actually see into the parts. Now, the only thing we need to do is set up a camera and put the camera so that it's inside our computer. So I'm going to click shift a and I'm going to add in my camera. And before I move it around, let's also click shift a and add in a quick area light. You can select that area light, click the little yellow circle tab and just position it in your scene. Click that light tab and bump up the wattage a bit just so you have some light going into your computer. Then select your camera and do the same exact thing you did to position the light. You want to click the little object properties, yellow square tab, and just change the rotation position scale to position your camera where you want. To see everything correctly, you can click that little camera view button to see what it's going to look like from the actual camera view. You can scale the PC down a bit just by selecting the object, clicking S. Once you're in your camera, what you want to do is click on the camera options. And because things are kind of zoomed in too much, you want to get a wide angle shot here so it really looks like you're inside this object. So go to the depth of field option for your camera and just keep playing with it until your scene is looking the way you like. That's really about it. There's tons of different ways where you could keep going down the rabbit hole with this. But again, I'm going to keep it easy. For now, we're just going to render this out, bring it back into After Effects. So in my render settings, I'm going to check on a few of these settings just to make my render look a bit better. Also, big step in your render settings, you want to go to the film section and check on transparent. Whenever we render it out, we can layer some footage underneath. 
And then I'm going to go to the output settings. I'm going to select where I'd like to output my image. I'm going to set the frame start and frame end to one and click render animation. Now, wherever I specify to render out, I should have my PC image. So now take your image, drop it back in After Effects, and then just take any shot of somebody looking directly at the camera and stack the layer beneath your inside the PC shot. And just like that, it should look like somebody is looking into whatever object you created in 3D. Super cool. To top it all off, I went to footagecrate.com, found some little spark assets, downloaded them, just dropped them in so that we have some sparks flying around. Now to finish this tutorial off, we're going to add in our advanced technique. This is where we're matching 3D motion tracking with our footage. So we're going to create this scene here where you can see them in this room and there's different plants and vines growing on the walls. And it's actually pretty simple to do, but there are some different plugins you may require. So I'm going to use Cinema 4D with the Octane plugin and the Forrester plugin. I'll leave links to below if you want to check those out. Octane is just the render engine that's optional. It's more of just personal preference. Forrester is important because it gives you a giant library of different plant assets. Plus there's animations for them growing and things like that. It's super awesome, especially for something like this. So to be able to work together with After Effects and C4D to complete the shots, what we need to do is first track our scene in After Effects. So drag in whatever footage you want to apply this to, right click on the footage, go to track and stabilize and do a 3D camera track. Once that's complete, what you want to do is hover over your scene, use that little bullseye and find a spot where you'd like the plants to grow. I'm going to right click on that keyboard and create a solid. I'm going to right click in the back and create a solid and then I'll right click on that monitor and create a solid. So because we set up our 3D camera track, whenever you scroll through, you should see those little squares, our track solids, and that's exactly what we want. They're essentially just placeholders for where we're going to place things in 3D space. So once you've done that, go up to File, Export. We're going to do the Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter and click OK. Just open up that C4D project file that you just saved from After Effects and double click on it. It should open up your 3D scene track straight into After Effects. This is really cool. In the top right, you can click off of your camera. You can click play and see where your track solids are and how our camera is actually moving. So it gives you a great visual representation of all the tracking and all the data that we gathered. So all you need to do here is place whatever you want to be happening on those little track solids because again, those are our references for where we want things to happen in 3D space. So I'm gonna go up to plugins, Forrester plugin, and I'm going to go to Multiflora. And I'm going to click through this little multi-flora library and just pick whatever vine, grass, or flower that I'd like to grow. You also want to click on coordinates for this object and you want to scale it up. So in the scale, I'm going to put it at like 20 or 30 and I'm going to position that flower over top of our track solid. So make sure it's really touching that track solid. It's rotated the right way. You guys can click that little button on your camera object to, to go to your camera view and just make sure everything is aligned properly. Now you can actually animate this. So we're going to select our flower objects. We're going to go to the multi-flora global tab and then you'll see this value called grow global. If you play with that, you should see it go from a little seed into a giant flower. So you can keyframe that easily just by starting wherever you want the grow to start, clicking that little button next to grow global to set a keyframe, drag all the way to the end and then crank up that value. Click again to set your keyframe and we're good to go. So go ahead and select that object, click control C, control V and duplicate it. You can go into your library and change up the flower if you want. And of course you want to position that duplication onto the other track solid in 3D space. And then do that the third time so that you have your third flower on your third track solid. Do this however many times you want, depending on the track solids, depending on how in-depth you want to make this. And we're looking good. So next up here, and this is this is a Cinema 4D Octane tip, what you want to do is create a shadow catcher object. So, so all you have to do is go down to create. You want to create a Cinema 4D Octane shader. Then just double click on that shader, go down to the common section and check on shadow catcher. Wherever your track solid objects are in your scene, just drag that shadow catcher shader over top of your colorful track solid colors and you're good to go. You can scale those up if it's a little bit too square and the shadows are getting cut off. So now let's set up our render settings and then render this out. I'm going to go to my Octane render settings and I'm going to set the samples at around 100 to 150. We want to keep it really low to save on time. To combat this, later on we're going to check on an AI denoiser so the low samples won't matter as much. I'm going to tweak around with the Octane settings some more. Again, these are personal. I like checking on static noise and a couple of these other things that I'm showing here. These aren't major. What is major though is going up to our main project settings. And you want to make sure your render is set to Octane Render if you're using the Octane plugin like I am. 
You can click on the Octane Renderer tab now and you want to check on Use Denoise Beauty Pass. So that way we can render with low samples, but then the AI will denoise it. You can click on Output, but the beauty of the C4D to After Effects workflow, whenever you do that little C4D export, all these settings should already be set up for you depending on your composition. So we don't need to touch that. Let's go to save and then I'm going to check on the alpha just so we export with a transparent background. We're going to click here and create a new folder wherever you want. And I'm just going to name this flower render, name the files flower and click save. That way, whenever we export, it'll export the images into that folder and we're good to go. So I'll fire up the render. And then once that's ready, we'll bring that animation straight back into After Effects. So once your animation is complete, we're going to go ahead and import this back into After Effects. So in your project bin, right click and go to import multiple files, select the first frame, import as footage. We're going to force alphabetical order. Now, one thing to pay attention to whenever you import multiple files, for some reason, After Effects default imports it at 30 frames per second. Go to your composition settings in After Effects and check the frame rates. Once you know what the frame rate of your footage is, you want to right click on your 3D render composition, go to interpret footage main and set the frame rate so that it matches our footage frame rate. And we're good to go. We now have a seamless 3D render of our flowers growing just by using that After Effects C4D workflow. So it goes to show you can use Blender, you can use C4D. It doesn't really matter what 3D software you're using. There's so many different ways, so many different tools in every 3D software. The real key thing is just identifying what you want to do, figuring out the steps to be able to accomplish that in whatever you feel comfortable in, and then working that into your normal After Effects, Premiere, Photoshop workflow. That's why I include all this 3D stuff into these tutorials because I really think it can help. So that's about it, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. Slap a like if you did. It means a huge amount to me. We have a bunch of new exciting content coming soon. I'm going to be uploading a few more shorts plus a new 3D tutorial on the cash in cash out music video that I'm really excited about, as well as our normal After Effects music video, digital art content that you guys are used to. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one.